Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Linda from House of Spiritual Supplies, which is located in Greensboro. And I want to say thank you for all the people that are coming back to this channel and providing so much support. And I also want to welcome any newcomers and for them to subscribe to our channel so that they can continue to get updates on spiritual supplies and how to use them. And this will help you with your spiritual journey. But first thing I want to say, we are located, our physical store is located at 2414 Spring Garden Road, Greensboro, North Carolina. And you can also shop with us online at houseofspiritualsupplies.com. And we're also located on Etsy as well and Pinterest. So you can go all to those other areas as well, whichever one that suits you to support and also um, to continue to see our updates. Now, we are a spiritual and apothecary supply shop, and I am creating this channel to help and guide, assist, or give spiritual tips to encourage and promote your spiritual development and spiritual journey. So that is my goal with this channel, and I hope it brings some assistance to helping you, because sometimes in the spiritual community, things can get a little confusing, but at least to give you some footing what needs to be done or maybe enhance what you're already doing so or maybe you give you a new perspective about something that's why this channel is created and again welcome 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 i'm just clearing the space and what we're going to do today is talk about how to use spirit guide oil as you can see right here all right and now a lot of us um we have spirit guides that direct and guide us and give us guidance to make this life a little bit more easier for us. Especially when we're confused about some things, sometimes we need a higher power. Some people say our spirit guides are our ancestors. They can also say that our spirit guides are guardian angels um, or animals that have passed or it doesn't have to be an animal that has passed, but maybe an animal spirit, spirit guide. So it's so many different avenues as far as spirit guides that are here to help and assist us. So that's another video going in more details. Right now, I'm just going to talk to you about the spirit guide oil. And we're going to talk about dressing candles with the spirit guide oil. Now, the candle I have here today that I'm working with is, as you can see, this is a 14 day candle and because I work with my spirit guides daily, I am choosing to use this uh, 14 day candle. Usually I don't use them because I don't like the way they burn sometimes. So I will use, let me grab this here, the smaller candle here, which is usually a five to seven day candle. But I've noticed I'm going through these weekly. So I decided, let me try this big one and see what's going on, how this works for me. And before we begin uh, with our candle, most of the time, usually, um, you use white candles, but that's most of the time, not always. Some people may have spirit guides that like darker candles, such as black or maybe blue. But if you're not sure what your spirit guides like, start with white and then build from there. And then you'll find out eventually, they'll let you know. <laughs> they'll let you know one way or another what candle colors they like. But white is usually the universal color because people use white candles before they came out with colored candles. So white is a safe way to go. And the first thing when we begin with this candle is cleansing it. There's different ways of cleansing it. Some people will cleanse this candle with um, salt water or they'll cleanse a the candle with holy water or uh, Florida water. <laughs> There's so many different ways of cleansing it. Or like for instance, a purification wash like I have here that I made. Um, it's like bluing water, but with my bluing water, I don't use regular faucet water with it. I will get beach water or spring water or well water. You reason why I don't use um, faucet water is because faucet water has so much chlorine. It's been processed really, it's hard. <laughs> it's been processed so much, many chemicals. I'd rather give it fresh from nature um, with my blowing water. And then also blowing water is like this one right here, this is my bottle. I add other things into it as well. But the first thing you do is, let's see here, get a paper towel and you will maybe soak this paper towel up with some holy water or Florida water, whatever you gotta do. 
the first thing I will tell people, spray, wipe your candles, spray it all over. But if you're gonna cleanse your candles, start with the inside first. Start with the inside and wax, and then after that, get the outside where you touch. And then get the bottom, okay? Cleanse your candle all the way down. And the reason why I say start with the wax first, because that's the part that's gonna collect, connect with spirit. This is the part you do first. You don't want to have your dirty part clean all the outside. And by the time you get up here, your cloth got so much dirt and debris that you're putting it in the candle. So start with this area first and work your way down. All right. Now, I am a practitioner that works with a lot of veves or I work with a lot of sigils. So for me, and if you are a ceremonial practitioner or someone that does that too, work with... Uh, Spirits that have babies or signatures as well. I will be talking about that more in this video. But the first thing we will do is, let me see, I gotta pull over here and see if I got it. Yeah, I do, okay. First thing you do is you will poke a hole in your candle. You can use a screwdriver or some people have spiritual things like um, certain wooden, how you say, points or something of that nature. Some people, they get spiritual with certain woods they use. I know with certain spirits, yes, I have to use certain type of woods to poke the holes in. But right now I have a screwdriver and everything. So you will punch a hole into your candle. I say for each different type of oil you add, punch a hole for that oil. Now, because I have a big surface here, I can punch many oil, many holes in here for many different types of oil I might add. But... Be careful that how many oils you add to your candle. You might want to really streamline your mission of how many oils you want. I would say the maximum maybe two or three if you are working with a smaller candle like this. A bigger candle, of course, you can put more holes into this. Next thing, you want to go ahead and add a hole into your candle. Oh, wow, this thing goes all the way down in there. You want to add a hole to your candle that is, how you say, a distance away from your wick. The reason why I say a distance away from your wick because if you add it too close to your wick, that oil will soak up your wick and your flame will probably be low. And the reason why that the fire will be trying to dry out that wick with all that oil in it and the flame will be low or you'll have problems or it'll drown out. So make sure you poke the hole of your candle a distance away from your wick. And from there, you're gonna take a few drops of oil and put it inside the oil the whole blood. Hold on one second, I gotta concentrate. That's a deep hole that I made too. There we go. And as you can see, in here that I have got the oil in the hole. Now, if you don't make it in a hole, it's okay. <laughs> it's not, everything's gonna, have a problem or anything like that. You're fine if you don't. Um, the spirit guide oil that I have has all the ingredients to connect you with spirit. However, some people um, feel like they want to add herbs into it. And I'm going to give some suggestions of herbs, but if you know your spirit guides like a particular type of herb, then give it because I have one spirit guide that likes weed. So we drizzle a little weed up in the camera. He's, he's just like happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if they like certain herbs, you can put that in there. However, some general herbs that I have written here is, um, some general herbs that I have here is like marshmallow herbs, star anise herbs, as well as wormwood. Those are some herbs that can help you connect with spirit that you can use. And also, um, some resins, which is highly recommended and do your research on them is frankincense, Copal and myrrh are very good resins in connecting with higher spirits and your spirit guides. So after we have done that, and like I said, I am a practitioner that uses sigils. Because I have a large surface here on the very top, I will take a point, like you can get one of these, you can get a whole bag of these from the dollar store, these little strolls right here, and you can draw your sigils on top. Some people draw their wish or how you say write out their wish on top for guidance, wisdom. What is it? Guidance, wisdom, clarity, 
Or have you right? And like I said, you can get a bunch of these. I got a bunch of them for a dollar and stuff. And these are actually bamboo skewers. So instead of just buying them for uh, for putting some meat and vegetables on, you can actually use them to write with. Let me put this back over here. So again, like I said, you can put your sigils in here or you can write out what you wish for. And for me, because I work with um, sigils and symbols, I'm going to do a triangle and I'm asking for guidance. Wisdom. And blessings and clarity. The one you can put. Now, I don't know if you can see that in there, but I pretty much wrote it out in a triangle form around the candle. Also, too, because if you work with sigils, and I do, and I won't show you that in this video, I will take a permanent marker and I will write on the outside exactly um, the sigils I'm working with. Um, I will also maybe write the wording that I will say over the candle. So I'm trying to think. Um, I have so many spirit guides, but for this video, I'm just going to write the wording out, uh, what I will put here. And again, uh, I will say assist. Assist with guidance. Wisdom. Clarity and blessings. On my spiritual path. Okay. From there, hold on. Okay, y'all, I'm back and everything. I had to pause for a minute because um, I got children here. I got to take care of. So as you can see, I don't know if you can see that down here. You can, it's just right on the front. And I have assist me with guidance, wisdom, clarity, and blessing on my spiritual journey and life. So from there, um, the candle is... You have pretty much put your sigils on the candle or you've written on the candle what you want it to have, what you want to do. And from there, you will talk into, this is me, how I do it. Now, everybody else do things different. Now, what I do is hold my candle and I will talk into it and tell it exactly what I wrote on the front. Assist me with wisdom, clarity, and guidance on my spiritual journey and life. You say you're intent into it. From there, you can go ahead and light it. It's up to you. But this is how simple it is to make a candle for your spirit guides. Once you light the candle, I say meditate with it at least, at least five minutes. I know sometimes it's hard for some people to just quiet your mind and just focus. People have different ways. I have a video talking more about, if I don't have it now, by the time you watch this, I will have it on how you can focus your mind to um, how you can work on focusing your mind to quiet your mind so you can focus on your attention. What are you bringing attention to? Which right now my intention is to bring, connect with my spirit guides. Now, I hope this video helped you as much as possible. Um, I will continue to bring more videos to help you on your spiritual journey. And again, this is about using spirit guide oil and connecting with your spirit guides. Some people will ask, also, I need to bring into attention. Some people will ask, like, for example, how often should I do this? Again, for me, I'm using this big candle because I work my spirit guides daily because I have a spiritual shop and I'm in a spiritual community online as well as in a physical store. So I have constantly have my, I have to have my spirit guides or my spirits around me. So I have to constantly do this daily. For some people, they may do it once a week to asking for guidance, wisdom on their journey as they begin their work week or something of that nature. 
but you do what is comfortable for you. <clears throat> um, don't feel like you're enslaved to it because I have noticed a lot of people on a spiritual journey feel like I got to keep feeding the spirits. I got to keep feeding the spirits. And you wind up being enslaved to the spirits when the spirits are supposed to be helping you on your journey. But you're more enslaving yourself like constant. I got to feed them. I got to do this. Sometimes I find some people you put so much into your spirits, you neglect everything else around you. Um, is that good for some, for some, maybe not. It's, it's, um, because your spirit guides want to guide you on this journey to being the best parent, to being the best lover, to being the best helper among men. So I, I look at it different. If you're focusing, feeding, 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 constantly giving into your spirit guides every day that you feel enslaved. Most of the people that I have seen like that get burnt out and walk away. They're like, I can't do this no more. Um, how you say, how they say where God will put on you as much as you can bear and stuff. So if you get into the point where you can't bear the relationship or keep feeding and feeding and feeding and feeding and feeding, maybe you need to reevaluate um, what's going on or what you're doing. So, cause it shouldn't be spiritual journey and spiritual connection should not be a burden. It should be an enlightenment, a pleasure. Other than that, you all have a blessed one and I hope to see you very soon. And don't for forget to subscribe to my channel for more spiritual information. Take care and be blessed. Ashe, ashe, ashe.